Hey, welcome back. So I had a bunch of potatoes lying around that I wasn't doing anything with, and I've been watching a lot of winemaking and home brewing videos. So I figured, well, what if I made wine out of them? So here I've got about two kilos of plain old russet potatoes. I went ahead and peeled off the skin and chopped them into manageable sized pieces for my food processor. Then working in batches, I blended them into a puree. Yum. Next up, I dumped them into a large pot with two liters of water and two cups of sugar. That'd be about 500 milliliters of sugar by volume. Not sure if you do volumetric measurements in metric, but I didn't really care about being too precise here. I just wanted some extra sugar for the yeast to munch on so that it could make extra alcohol. Next up, I brought that up to 90 degrees Celsius for about 20 minutes. This, in theory, cooks the starches and converts them into sugars that the yeast can eat. Whether that actually happens with potatoes, I'll leave up to the scientists, but I figured it was a good first step just to get things going. And after the 20 minutes, I wanted to bring down the temperature as quickly as possible. I think this is to prevent any bad bacteria from forming, which could spoil your wine. So I threw a bunch of ice cubes and some water into another pot, placed one pot inside the other, and got to stirring. So there's a few pieces of specialized equipment that you'll probably want if you want to get into home brewing and winemaking. And those are a carboy, which is just a large jug. This one here can hold a gallon or about four liters. You'll need some sort of airlock. This one has a little cup with a tube in it and then a cap that goes over the top. You fill it up with some liquid and the air bubbles can only go one way. This will keep any sort of bacteria or airborne yeast from getting into your wine and spoiling it. And you'll also need some sort of food grade sanitizer. I'm using Star Sand because it's the most widely used one in the home brewing industry. I'm sure there are other brands out there that do just as well. I've also tried using a small amount of bleach diluted in a whole bunch of water, but that didn't seem to work for me last time I used it. So I'd recommend just buying a bottle of this stuff. You use a very small amount each time. So you get a bottle like this and it'll last you for ages. Also the Star Sand bottle has a really cool squeeze mechanism to dose out how much sanitizer you want. And on the back there are measurements for how much to use. So all you gotta do is pour a little bit into your carboy, fill it up with water, swish it around a little bit, and then you can pour that same sanitizer into a bowl or a bucket to sanitize all the rest of your equipment. All right, now that the potato mash is cool, I'm gonna ladle it into a funnel placed on top of the carboy. And don't worry, the star sand bubbles are totally fine to leave in the bottle. Uh, you don't want the liquid, but the bubbles contain very little of the cleaning solution. And it's just an acid, so once it's diluted in your wine, there's nothing in it that would harm you. Next up, I'm gonna proof some yeast in some warm water for a few minutes. And don't even ask me what kind of yeast to use because it's all over my head. There's different types for different types of beers, different types of wines. I think I got one for a white wine, which I think potato wine would be considered. But regardless, after a few minutes, go ahead and pour that into the carboy. Don't worry about the overflowing bubbles, those are just the sanitizer. And behind the scenes, I definitely dumped out a little bit of the solution because as you can see, this is filled way too high. Next up, I screwed on the airlock and filled up the cup with some sanitizer. And then I waited for the yeast to get started. And boy, did it get started. Later that night, I started hearing some demonic gurgling sounds. And although I tried to safeguard the setup with some foil placed underneath the carboy formed into a bowl, uh, it was overflowing with foam. I think it might have been too hot in my apartment, which caused some extreme fermentation to start. Maybe I added way too much yeast. Are you not supposed to use a whole packet? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. But regardless, I immediately MacGyvered what is called a blow-off container, where I basically jammed a hose into the tube of my airlock, put the other end in a large bottle, and filled that bottle with sanitizer so that any excess foam would fill up that bottle before it had a chance to escape. After a day of the violent eruptions, things subsided a bit, so I was able to switch back to the regular airlock. And once the bubbling stopped, I decided it was time to filter out the wine from the potato by running through a strainer and a coffee filter. This ended up taking way too long, so I decided to sanitize a kitchen towel and use that to press out the wine. Next up, I transferred it to some wine bottles to do what's called racking. This is basically letting all the sediment fall to the bottom of the bottle so that you have a clear wine. Now, I probably should have just left it in the carboy for a few days so I didn't have to transfer it back and forth. But after a few days of settling, you can see all the yeast has fallen to the bottom of the wine bottles. So I transferred the wine back to the carboy, being careful not to pour in any yeast. 
Then I transferred it back to the wine bottles using this awesome auto siphon that makes siphoning automatic. I could have waited for longer to make it more clear, but I wanted my wine. It's been long enough. It's wine o'clock. And you could probably let this age, but it's potato wine, so. So it could definitely use a little bit more time racking. You can see that it is uh, pretty cloudy uh, still, but it's very fine uh, cloud, you know? So it'll take a long time for that to settle. And I'll check back possibly later on if I keep this around, depending on how it is. Hard to pinpoint any major flavor components. It smells kind of like a little bit of alcohol, a little bit of fermenty, yeasty goodness. A little bit sparkly, no carbonation really, but like the mouthfeel is a little bit crisp and uh, the balance of sweetness and dryness, it's very like dead center. But flavor wise, there's not much to it. It's very mild, a little bit yeasty. There's not really much to say about this. It didn't really pick up much flavor from the potato. It's kind of pleasant to drink, but also it doesn't have much flavor. So there's kind of no point to drinking this. So did we make wine? Technically. Did we make potato wine? Probably not. There's probably not enough sugar in the potatoes, uh, so it's really just sugar wine from whatever sugar I added. Should you go and try and make this yourself? Probably not. There's probably no point to it. But is it a good entry point into winemaking in general? Again, probably not. <laughs> I don't know, this is just a fun little thing. So maybe next time I'll make something tastier, a little bit better, but let me know what you thought in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.